up. <laughs> <laughs> Are we live? We yeah. Are we yeah. We're live. All right. So we're live. Welcome to the Motivation Mastermind on Friday. I have no idea what we're talking about other than I think we're going to talk a little bit about how to have a level 10 day all the time. Is that right? Level Is that 10 our topic today? Level 10 experience. Level, level 10, 10 life. Experience. How to, how to have a level 10 experience in your life whenever you want it, just to kind of pluck it out of the air. And, you know, today feels like a level three. I'm going to bump it up seven notches. We're going to make it a level 10. And we're going to figure out how to do that today. But for some reason, I'm like a ventriloquist and Frank's face isn't moving, but I'm he's talking somehow. I don't know how this works. But that's that's what it's about today, guys. So let's get rocking. Let's get rocking. So, Cam, I'm going to kick it over to you because I think this is a, a topic that uh, is near and dear to your heart. So why don't you talk about what that even means and how that looks to everybody? Okay. Everybody thinks I'm lame and they laugh at me. But there's a Tony Robbins audio that I can literally quote almost every word of, and it's 40 minutes long. I've listened to it probably over 100 times just because at one point it was the only thing on my phone. And uh, basically, he talks about this thing called the quality quantifier. So you quantify with a number the quality of any experience. So you could be walking your dog, you could be doing dishes, you could be sitting down watching TV, you could be at work, whatever. And you basically put a number to the experience on a scale from minus 10 to plus 10. Um, and it was really cool. He took people and he, because he was working on like a, a, a workout program or something like weight loss program or something like that. So he took these people and he put like food in front of them. And he said, all right, this banana bread um, on a scale from minus 10 to plus 10. Like, what is it right now for you? Like, how much do you want it? Because he wanted to see like what makes that feeling happen like that feeling of oh i have to have this right now like it's really good and it's craving me like i need this chocolate cake i need this banana bread and so um he you know tested around he asked around and uh you know one of the people were like oh it's a three i mean banana bread's not that good he's like how can you make it an eight he's like i can't make it an eight like the banana bread isn't that good and so he said what if i told you this was like the last banana bread in the house and then he's like oh the last there's no more left and that's when like desire kicked in he realized all right scarcity like this is the only banana bread in the house and i think um there's two sides to the whole making any experience a level 10 because there's a lot of bad experiences we indulge in because they're a level 10 and there's a lot of good in experiences that we're missing out on because they're a minus 10 so we want to learn how to reverse that how can we make our desire for exercise a level 10 make it scarce make exercise a scarce resource to the point where like we have to have it right now rather than this banana bread or this coca-cola we have to have it right I now i have a question is is it about how to make it a level 10 only or is it sometimes just about your outlook or perspective on it it's always well i it yeah it's both it's both because like sometimes you can't control a situation right like sometimes you can't control the fact that you're like sitting in the middle of a plane ride with like two people who are really annoying and you're like all crushed up and you're there for like four hours and you're like how am i gonna do this or you know what that's a really short plane ride you're there for like 14 hours and you don't know what to do um that's something you can't really control you can't be like hey guys shut up like um so that's all mental you have to like really try and center yourself and then right. there's situations like like walking your dog you can make that fun or like even uh, prison, as an example, you're you're in jail, you're in prison for like two years. You can make that a good experience if you really try. So, um, yeah, there's you could do both. Are, there, are you? Is there? Is there a level ten that, for example, for Cam, would there be a specific thing in <clears throat> level ten? So no matter what that experience was, it would have to reach that level ten, or is the level 10 based on the experience? So, for example, you mentioned being in jail. Obviously, being in jail, you, I mean, to me, you could, you could make it a level 10 for rel relatively speaking, but it wouldn't be like you're sitting on the beach in Hawaii with your feet in the water and hula girls all around you with, with, with a pina colada next to you. Yeah, no, it would, absolutely. It couldn't be that. So is so it relative, relative to the event i think um, i think every level 10 experience is all in the mind because like you look at somebody who has everything like that who is sitting on the beach with a pina colada and has everything they want and all the freedom the 
they want, but they're so unhappy. Then you have a person who is living in a really awful apartment, dealing with like relationship issues, but doing what they love every single day and working their ass off for their craft. And they're so much happier, right? So it's like, I don't think it matters too, too much exactly what the experience is. I think everybody can have a level 10 no matter what. And, um, it just takes a lot of, um, a lot of thinking. And it was really cool what he did with the people with the food because he got them to associate the banana bread to a minus 10. He basically, because he wanted to see the reverse, like how can we take something that's really bad for us and reverse that, make that a minus 10. So he just like, he started asking, how can you make, how can you like, cause he got them to plus 10, right? With like scarcity, with um, just the fact that they were hungry and you know, if there was whipped cream on it or whatever, like they would just add stuff to it. Um, and then he told him, all right, now that it's plus 10, make it a minus 10, make this banana bread, the most disgusting thing. You would never touch it in a million years. And so a lot of them were like, I really can't do that. Like you're, and he had to literally like hold them back from grabbing it because they wanted it that bad. Um, and they were like little kids and stuff like that. So he was like, all right guys, um, make it a minus 10. And so they like added stuff to it. They're like, oh, put green beans with it or like put this gross thing with it. Or, oh, I would make it a minus 10 if I thought it would make me sick. Or if I thought it would like, you know, um, jeopardize my health because like then my freedom's away and now I can't like live healthfully and whatever. So, um, a lot of, a lot of the times you have to add things to it. You know, like if you're doing dishes, put headphones on. You know, if you're walking your dog, put headphones on. Um, if you are in jail, I don't know, make friends. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, um, there's a lot of things you can add to it. Make it jail. <laughs> True. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you what do you guys think about this so far? I was thinking real, real quick, quick uh, uh, Brent, Brent. You and I were talking about, about the Shawshank, Shawshank Redemption, Redemption a couple of days, days ago. ago. And I don't, I don't know if either of you have seen a movie. movie. Frank, Frank, I've got to guess, guess you've seen The Shawshank, Shawshank Redemption. Redemption. You know I have, sir. Probably most, most of the people watching have seen that movie. movie. And, and there's, there's a, a scene, scene where Tim, Tim Robbins, Robbins is, what, what, was what was his character's name? Do you remember, you Frank? Oh, uh, he was the lawyer. He was a lawyer. Yeah, but what was his name? His name was, oh, man, you got me now. Hold on. Let me know. Tim scene, Tim Robbins, he... He, he, he ended, ended up getting, getting to build, build this library, library system, system in the prison. prison. And, and while he was there, there they, they, they added, added books, books, they started to add recordings. recordings. And, and at, at one, one point, point, he decided he wanted to share, share this one recording. recording. He, he played, played, I think it was Mozart. Andy Dufresne. Andy Dufresne, Andy Dufresne, Andy Dufresne that's, that's it. it. And, and Andy, Andy Dufresne, Dufresne took this recording of Mozart and he piped it out to the entire prison. And it was like this feeling came over everyone and himself of life, of life that, that they, they got, got to experience, experience life, life again and they felt human again and, and he, he sat there in this office, office. he had locked, locked the door so no one could get in playing this and they were knocking the door saying open up open up open up we're gonna you're gonna be in so much trouble if you don't let us in and he sat there quietly his eyes were closed he was in this zen place he was not in that library he was someplace else and they broke in and they threw him in solitary confinement, I think, is what happened after that for a month or two months. But he didn't care because what he got to do and what he got to experience took his his day, took that place he was at and put it to a level 10. He was able to go there in his mind. And when you were talking about that, Cam, that's, that's what I was thinking about was that. And I don't know why, but for some reason on my screen, Frank keeps coming up. Maybe I'm... Maybe I need to press the escape button, the enter button. I don't know. I keep seeing Frank, but that's okay. That's beside the point. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I would second that. And that's one, uh, actually a great movie to, uh, to use as an example. You know, I, I, I really like that one. Um, it's a very good movie. I think uh, surrounding yourself, like you said, you know, with that music, with that harmonization. So I, I'm going to say, I'm going to use harmonization, but that brain function that needs that, you know, because what you said, Cam, is everybody has that ability. We actually all do. Um, one thing that, uh, that, that really grabs my attention about that movie is when he was sitting in that chair, he just put his hands back. And life was absolutely still. All you could hear was like the Mozart or Beethoven, whatever was playing yeah. at that time. But that's all that, that that he cared about was the absolute time of harmonization <laughs> between him and music. And that was it. 
Yeah, you know, I've kind of used this in my own life too. I mean, before I started doing this podcast, before I started doing music full time, before any of that stuff happened, I was working at this really crappy job that I absolutely hated. Um, I was basically cutting grass, cutting down trees, trimming bushes, stuff I don't really like to do because I'm, I kind of consider myself a little bit of a hippie. And so like, I, you know, I, I don't, I don't do any animal products. I don't like cutting down trees. I don't even like killing insects for the most part, you know? And so my entire job was to basically destroy nature. You know, we had to just destroy stuff and I, I didn't like it, but at the same time, you know, it was a job. I needed money. I had to pay my bills. I had to eat at the end of the day. And so what I did for a few years is I, I would listen to headphones. I'd listen to music as much as I possibly can just to enjoy the experience, you know? So I put on some of my favorite tunes while I'm cutting the grass. I'd sing, I'd dance. Um, and then eventually I, I started actually listening to like podcasts and audiobooks and like Tony Robbins tapes and, and, uh, you know, think and grow rich, the 10 hour audiobook. I started listening to that kind of stuff. Karen, I'm sorry. You look like you're crying. You're cracking me up. Huh? Oh, I, I, I look cry. over, I look over to you. You're just, <laughs> I cry when I yawn. It's a thing. It's got that one tear. Anyways. So I used to listen to so much like I work eight hour days like 40 hours a week and so I just listen constantly to all these different tapes that would empower me and so I just find ways to score my life find ways to score um, and by score I basically mean this is a Tony Robbins term that I learned listening to all these tapes he says you could take something you hate and turn it into something you love by simply scoring it you know add a friend add some music Add an audiobook, maybe turn it into a challenge or turn it into a game. You could do something to, to further enjoy that experience. Cause at the end of the day, you like you talked about it, it's all it all has to do with your mindset, right? You're in this situation, you're in this present moment, you're here, no matter what, you're you're there. Right? But you could change that and you could evolve that essentially if you could add music, add different things. And so I like how Cameron brought this up because I mean, before we got on the show, we're like, oh, what do we talk about? Do we talk about this quantity climb fire? Do we talk about mindset? Do we talk about all these things? And it all comes together. Really, it's about you creating your own experience. It's about you deciding what it is that you want to experience, what kind of life you want, what kind of how you want to feel. And the problem is most people just kind of go with the flow, right? They just kind of go with whatever life gives them. They just kind of let it happen, whatever. And the problem with that is like, that subjects you to a lot of suffering. It could subject you to boredom, like Cam is right now. It could subject you to, <laughs> you know, I just yawn a lot. It's weird. It gets like you, basically what I'm trying to say here is you can you can make experiences better. You can, and it doesn't have to be a crappy experience. Like washing dishes can be awesome. It really can be. Even like going for a walk, like it's. I especially like the idea of doing this when you're trying to implement a new habit into your life, which I'm sure you guys are are doing and a lot of people are doing right now because it's 2017, because people are setting their New Year's resolutions, because people, some people are starting to get serious about their lives and serious about their routines. Find ways to make it fun. Like for me personally, um, I hated working out for the longest time. I really did. But what I what I did to to, for, to basically create an enjoyable experience was I got a coach. Right. I went to the gym. I started doing classes and that made it more fun for me. So try that out. Yeah, dude, you, you know, literally I was, just said a few days ago, oh, I have to drive to Windsor tomorrow morning. That's going to suck. Yeah. And I straight up just told you, like, dude, you can do things like throw a CD and bring people like go to Costco. I don't know, like go to Windsor for a reason <laughs> rather than just waiting in line. Emotionalize yeah. I, it. You know? While you're talking about that, I was thinking how kids, little kids take almost anything and they their imagination takes over and it becomes this incredible experience and as adults i think we don't use our imaginations enough we don't use the inner mind that we have i remember playing with my niece one time she was about a year and a half or two years old and she's sitting on the floor we we set up all of her stuff with animals in front of her or she set them up the, she she created this and they were her audience and then we had her little metal xylophone and she played that and pretended she was doing a concert for this audience of stuffed animals. And she had so much fun. Her mom was videotaping it. I was there with her. I was helping her do all of this. And she had so much fun and I had so much fun because I was there with her and her imagination. And I think that's the place that we need to tap if we want to 
be able to take whatever we're going through and make it better. Because let, let, let's face it, this this I, I don't think this is about <clears throat> settling for what you have. This is about enjoying the moments of life so that while you're on this journey to what it is you desire and what you seek, which we're really never, ever going to achieve because when you get there, you're going to want more. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's normal. That's natural. It makes sense to continue to expand. When you have more knowledge, you want to gain more knowledge. When you have more intelligence, you want to gain more intelligence. You need to, you need to do that. You do, being complacent is never a good place to be. So we're never ever, ever going to get there. So the challenge is while you're striving to get to this place where you're never going to ever reach, what do you do so you can be happy along the way? And I think that's what we're talking about today to make that experience of that excursion of that journey to be a pleasant, happy, exciting level 10 experience as much as possible. And I believe that the key to that is in your yeah, mind. I, I'll definitely back you up on that. Uh, you know, looking at, as you said, it's, it's a journey. It's a, it's a what? It's a, it's, it's a what? It, 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 <laughs> I'm sorry. It's an absolute journey. It's that, that self-discovery, finding yourself, you know. Um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier, you know, about washing dishes. And as I was expressing, like, that's in a journey for me. Because if I'm having to wash dishes with something I absolutely hate doing, um, when I do it, I start engaging and in, in finding new ideas, new creative thoughts um, that I could write down later in my journal or write down uh, on, a, on, a, on a, my, one of my booklets or write down on one of the margins in my one of my books. But, I mean, expressing that self-discovery and starting to, to, to plan your, your, your day and find new things, like you said, with, when you, if you're in prison. I mean, there's a lot of people who are in prison because of their actions. But if they could absolutely find – and I have a few friends that, are, that have got like a, a – a prison ministry where they go into prisons and they and they and they talk, you know, they they're doing motivational uh, speaking or inspirational speaking, whatever you want to call it, and they're helping these inmates start to discover that self, you know, that that self area uh, in their mind and within their heart, and really pushing that muscle to keep going and, and to strive for something great and then hone in on it, you know, as I said earlier, definitely want to hone in on whatever it is you want to attain, you want to hone in on it and, and do whatever it takes. You got to persevere. That's what we're, we're meant to do is persevere against life's obstacles, you know, and a lot of people have, they get, they, they really do fall short from it. Absolutely. Um, so I just want to talk about how we can take a negative experience that feels really, really good and make it a minus 10. So this could be... That's confusing. Say that again. <laughs> I want to take a negative experience that Give is a plus 10, you know, like being lazy example. is a negative experience. Like the, like... Uh, example, example, binge eating. Yeah, binge, binge eating, eating junk food. Okay, so that something is killing bad you. that feels good and we want to make it in your mind a negative experience. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So... That's how, that's what Tony Robbins' motivation was at the time. He wanted to take unhealthy food and unhealthy habits and make them a minus 10 for people. And he wanted to take healthy food and healthy habits and make it a plus 10. So what he did was he basically just had people really, really emotionalized with like the concept of like what this will do to you. You know, and I talked about this in a past episode. I was like, before you eat a heavy meal, like document like in, in little bullet notes, like I feel energetic. I'm breathing nicely. My shoulders are up. I'm smiling. I feel pretty happy right now. And then eat a heavy meal time 45 minutes after that and then write down how you feel. And you'll notice a big difference. I guarantee you because digestion is like the heaviest energy draining process that our body does. So like understand that when you eat a big big heavy meal you won't feel good after and like understand what that does to you and like he told people to like sit in front of a mirror naked and really look at yourself and see if you're satisfied with who you are right and um it made a lot of people feel that oh this chocolate cake as delicious as it is it is a negative 10 experience for me. Just like how cocaine for a lot of people is a negative 10 experience because sure, it is like the best thing ever. Like I'm addicted to energy. So like if I ever did coke, I would be hooked probably. But it's such a negative experience. Like it's such a negative 10 experience for me because it's just like I'll be addicted. I'll be wasting all my money. I'll be unhealthfully like 
snorting something into my lungs, which probably isn't really that good for you. Like I'll be doing something against the law. I'll have to like deal with sketchy drug dealers. Like it's just like such a stupid, like really awful thing in my mind, but it would probably feel like the greatest thing. Right. So I've, I've associated a negative 10 experience to cocaine and I'm sure you have, and I'm sure you guys have as well. And so many other people have done that with drugs. So how could we do that with food? Because food is like our drug today, you know. I did that I think once. It's a- uh, I had I, I love I love cheese. Cheese is one of my most favorite things. And what I did was I I like so grilled cheese sandwiches. Love grill. I still to this day I would love grilled cheese sandwiches. So for as an example, you could say, well, I want to have a grilled cheese sandwich. But would you want to have ten grilled cheese sandwiches? What would you feel like after you ate ten? or 12 or 15 grilled cheese sandwiches. I don't think I'd feel very good. I, 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 I'd, I'd be all clogged up. I'd be bloated. I'd feel sick to my stomach. So when I have that craving to have something that I know I shouldn't have, I imagine having eaten a huge plate of it and more than I could ever imagine. And, and what would I feel like after that's done? And then that feeling gets associated with that food. We do that all the time. I had w- one time I went out to a pizzeria Uno and I ate a white pizza. And the next day I was sick as a dog. Now, I don't know if it was because of that or it was just a coincidence. But for the longest time, I would not have any white pizza and I would not go to a pizzeria Uno's because I associated that feeling with that place. And I think that's what you're talking about, right, Cam, where you take something and you know it's bad for you, but it feels good to do it. What can you do to associate a bad thing, a bad feeling with that, so you don't do that bad thing even though it might feel good normally to do it? Yeah, the best technique, I think, is contrast. Like, just bring yourself, like before you're about to eat a really unhealthy meal, bring yourself back to how you felt when you were bedridden, (laughs) vomiting, you had food poisoning, or you were just sick, you had the flu or whatever, because that will definitely motivate you to eat more healthy. Like it definitely helped me because sure in the moment, like everything like looks good, but once you bring yourself to how it feels when you're bedridden or like you bring yourself to a low point where you're really, really unhealthy and you feel like garbage, Um, you'll realize how garbage the food actually is. And that's why I want people to write down exactly how they felt before the meal and how they felt after the meal, just like as an experiment. And um, I, what I really enjoy too is like really, really like looking at your body and kind of like centering yourself. Like say you have a grilled cheese in front of you, okay? And before you're about to eat it, it's really nice. It's warm. It's toasty. It's like steamy. Does it have steamy. a tomato on it too? What? Does it have a tomato on it too? Sure. Yeah, dude. Like I'll have it too. Right. There's a grilled, there's a grilled cheese in front of me also. So what I would do is I would sit there and I would try and center myself and I I would look at myself. I'd look into my arms. I'd look into my veins and stuff. And I would actually like kind of look at my heartbeat because my, my heart beats out of my chest. It's really cool. Um, but then I'll realize if I eat this, it's literally going to clog up all of these veins and arteries. It's going to literally clog up. It's going to turn into this white fatty glue that sticks to the sides of my arteries. It's going to slow me down. It's going to mess with my energy levels. It's like going to make me heavy. It's going to make me fat. It's going to make me greasy. I might get pimples afterwards. Like there's so many things. Also an animal suffered for it. The amount of resources that were used to make this grilled cheese um, it's, it's just like everything about this grilled cheese is, how do you know, how do you know the cow doesn't like being milked? Oh, <laughs> why don't you ask the cow bears? Why don't you, why don't you ask? I heard, the it's, cow? A, I heard it's a very moving experience. for them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, I think basically what Cam's trying to get at here is you need to not just know it, but you need to feel it. You need to feel that this change needs to happen. You need to feel that this, whatever it is, this grilled cheese or this bad habit or this cocaine, you need to feel that it's ruining your life. Because if you just intellectualize it, I mean, intellectually, come on. Everybody knows it's unhealthy. How many people, yeah, yeah, like cocaine. (laughs) How many people know it's going to mess with you? It's going to mess with your brain. It's going to make you feel weird for a little while. And then you're going to have this crash, right? intellectually people know this but emotionally they feel that it gives them this feeling of life this high grilled cheese right grilled cheese 
intellectually, most people know cheese is not healthy. Health, it's not, it just isn't. There's studies over and over and over again that tell you it's unhealthy. People know that cows don't like to be milked um, <laughs> bears. Actually, there's more and more people realizing that most cheese, milk, and all dairy products are full of pus. Because, oh, yeah. yeah, like if you want to talk about emotionalizing it, every time you're eating cheese or milk, there's pus in it. There's there's actually what is there's a, a scientific blood as well. There's blood. There's pus because think about it. This cow's being milked all day long, constantly. OK, let's rape the cow so that it's pregnant again so we can milk it some more. So here, you literally have to get that deep into yeah. it if you're really going to create a change because you need to not just know it like, oh, yeah, well, the cow doesn't like it. Well, no, it's like the cow's being freaking tortured. Okay, when it's at when it's at that level of of intensity, that's when you actually change. See, it's getting so intense. I'm knocking <laughs> stuff over here. No, dude, that's literally what I did too. Like <laughs> exactly because it's so funny that I'm remembering this. Two years ago, I absolutely loved grilled cheese. I loved oh, yeah. I loved mac and cheese, grilled cheese, French toast, French toast, pizza with extra cheese. I loved it all. And then. And then I put it, I actually, during the tape, he tells you to put food in front of you. And I put a grilled cheese in front of you. That's no joke. And um, I literally threw it in the garbage afterwards. I cooked it. It was beautiful. It was ready to be eaten. But I really, like, I had to throw it out. I was so disgusted. So and, here's, um, here's, this, here's, go ahead, get finished and I'll ask my question. I just want to say this isn't, like, I'm not trying to get people to stop eating grilled cheese. This is just an example of, like, it could be a cookie. It could be chocolate cake. It could be a milkshake. But, like... Whatever it is, get so disgusted with it, and I'll tell you, I have not eaten a grilled cheese in two years. It's I have not since that day. I've not eaten dairy in general. Like I haven't eaten unhealthy food like to that point in two years. Because you've created, yeah. it's basically because you've created a new association. You yeah. Emo- not just thought, okay, yeah, sure, that sucks. Pop. Oh yeah, pop's not good for you, sure, but you still drink it because it tastes good. But when you have an emotional an, an emotional reason, an emotional association to why you, you're going to change, why you're not going to do it, or why you are going to do it, or whatever. That's when things change. Yeah, like I made it a part of who I am. And that's what people do with exercise. It's a part, part of who something. they are, right? So, yeah, I, no, so I have a question. I have, I have a couple of questions. So what about – I'm going to – let me ask both of these questions because I think they're probably there's probably a similar answer. You'll have people who will say, yeah, but you only live once. So you should get to enjoy those things like a cho- chocolate cake and ice cream and Philly cheese steaks and all, you know, eating Chinese food and, and having as much of these different things that you want, you know, having delicious pastries and, and pizza. And you should be able to enjoy those things. That's why they're there. You only live once. If it means it takes five years off my life, it takes five years off my life. I want to enjoy those things. I should be able to enjoy those things. What's the big deal? And then also there's people who they they eat those eat those foods for emotional reasons already because they're using it to make them feel better because of some other pain. So how do we flip flop those things? Because if you say, well, you know, don't eat this food because it's going to and they get this emotional feeling about the food that it's going to make them feel worse. They still haven't gotten rid of this other thing that is making them feel bad. So there's there's another component to it, and that's and that's a complication to it for a lot of people. So I watched we watched a documentary the other night, uh, me and my family. Um, you know, and I'm I'm I'm, I'm gonna sum it up in two two different ways because uh, I think you brought something very good up. Is we watched an individual who started off at a very young age being neglected by her family, and so her best comfort was food. Now, subconsciously, she thought that literally it was absolutely comforting for her and her twin sister to just continue to induce themselves with food because it brought comfort because of their 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 emotional uh, dysfunctional family at the time. The foundation was broken, and so that was their way now today they're both at 470 70 something pounds and they have yet to reverse the cycle one person one individual eats as a portion of 17 people one individual consumed as much as the 17 individuals would, would or 17 a party of 17 would consume as far as pizza that's amazing so uh, I, I really believe that 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 
part of their brain, that part of thought, that emotional part of their brain uh, has been just bombarded, just bulldozed with this is the outlet. This is the outlet. And nobody's transformed that. Frank, you and I, we, that. We, we talked about this before the podcast. Yes. We talked about when people smile, right? Different parts yes. of their brain light up. And I would, I, I have I have to believe, in fact, I know that if you gave certain people a, a slice of pizza or a piece of grilled cheese or a, a, a piece of pie or cake or a steak, that same part of their brain would light up on fire because it's feeding them what they need and what makes them happy. It creates mm -hmm. happiness in their brain. So and you've got to replace you. you if, if you want to create a new habit, you've got to replace the old habit. So if you if you're going to replace that food you've got to replace that happiness with something else you can't just say okay i'm going to change how i feel about this but then you're going to create a vacuum for this happiness and you've got to replace it with something else so how do you replace that so now now that now that you said that uh for me it was it, mine was coke my was coca-cola i was extremely addicted to coca-cola extremely addicted to chewing tobacco <laughs> cold turkey and how i stopped is by just instantaneously doing what tony robbins actually suggested finding the negative in it how bad it truly is for my family how bad it was for my character how bad it was for for my integrity and for my health and for the benefit of my family how truly bad so i drove it all the way down no matter how much it really truly made me feel after chewing almost almost 18 years of tobacco on and off I really felt like, yo, I have to make it. I have to make an action right here. So when somebody says there's no such thing as positive act or pos a, a positive uh, uh, massive action, they're lying because there is. You have to make it. An individual has to absolutely come to a point and make it. And when you do that, then you have that raw power of the bulldozer bulldozing that emotion of oh it feels so good but i love that sensation and as bird, uh, bird said those lights turning on those lights start to dimmer and now you'll be able to control that energy in your mind and transform your thoughts <laughs> and so how do you replace exactly that what i did with coca-cola you I could go, I... yeah you know what bears like the question you asked was really interesting cause, to me because you said like what do you say to somebody who's taking this food or taking this drug or indulging in this bad habit and it's bringing them joy. It's bringing them an emotional sense of like, yes, like I, this is happiness, this is joy, this is comfort, this is what I need, this is what I want right now. How do you get them to, re to associate that to something negative when you realize, like, like Frank said, you really have to associate yourself to all the ways that it's actually not making you feel pleasurable. So let's use the grilled cheese, for example. Okay, the grilled cheese. It brings we're gonna you this podcast and, and we're going to go get grilled cheese. Uh, not me, buddy. I'm <laughs> yeah. we're, we're making people want grilled cheese. I'm fasting, bro. Yeah, I'm not it's eating. A subconscious, it's a subconscious. Yeah. <laughs> but th he said it, you know, you have to associate all the reasons why it's actually bad for you. And think about it. Look, grilled cheese, a bad habit, cocaine. These are all surface level pleasures. If you really think about it, it's not okay. It's surface level pleasure. It's happiness. It's joy. It's ecstasy but is it fulfillment that's what i'm trying to get at here is you're not going to be fulfilled by those things and right, so not, when you realize right. that and when you allow yourself to associate the negative associations that a grilled cheese really brings you a poor diet a bad habit that's when you can create a change and then how do you well how do you change to something else because like bear said if you just you know drop a bad habit there's a vacuum there there's that bad habit was bringing you joy that bad habit was bringing you excitement. That bad habit was bringing you something. And so you need to replace that with something. And so I would not suggest you just go out there and break a bad habit. Obviously, if you're going to break a bad habit, you need to replace it with something else. And so like for me, when I quit eating, like Bear said, like he loves cheese. Bro, I'm with you. I freaking loved cheese so much. Poutine, cheese on my pizza, cheese on everything. Like ask Cam, dude, like how much cheese did I go through? Too much. Too, too much he's just like, you, oh. were you able to poo bro yeah. let's not get into that but um that's the thing is i loved cheese so freaking much oh, yeah, so but poo. what i had to do was i had to learn to associate <laughs> that yeah cheese it's tough to poo when you eat a lot of cheese you know that sucks <laughs> also cheese is making me fat i had these big man titties that i wasn't proud of also you know girls would look at me funny also you know acne I, 
acne was the thing poor skin just like just all these problems and like you know these things are there intellectually but i had to emotionalize it i had to think about you know wait a minute this cheese it doesn't know sure it brings me pleasure but it makes me feel like i'm less than i really am it makes me feel like you know what because i'm eating this cheese i'm unhealthy and sure you might be okay with five years being taken off your life but what about the quality of your life right like is that cheese it's bringing you pleasure it's bringing you happiness that shot of cocaine that drink of coca-cola it's bringing you surface level pleasure right now instant gratification in this moment right now but is it fulfilling you like that's the thing when you're done eating the grilled cheese are you satisfied like are you truly satisfied okay yeah you are what about a half hour later what about an hour later what about two hours later? what about a day later you completely forgot that that thing has even happened so that's not true fulfillment. That's not true happiness. It's not going to bring your life to a level that you're actually proud of. In fact, if you just, if you indulge in these instant gratification pleasures your entire life, at the end of your life, you're going to, you're going to have a regret. You're not going to feel like, Oh yeah, my whole life, just so much pleasure the whole time. It was so good. Just joy, just food. No, you're going to feel like shit because you never actually fulfilled anything. Here I go knocking stuff over then. Don't even let me talk guys. I get too intense. Just knocking stuff over. Okay, so we, we, we've kind of talked about this with respect to food. What about with respect to, let's say, uh, a significant other or a spouse that you're at odds with? Or when your kids are maybe uh, misbehaving or they're, they're going through some troubles and, 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 and you're, you're losing touch with them, or you've got some type of job that you don't like, or this giant hand is coming at your face on the screen. And, um, you know, <laughs> what about, what about things like that? How do you, how do you reassociate a different feeling to those negative things that are happening in your life so that you can say, okay, and I'm just talking about negative things that make you feel good. I mean, negative things that make you feel bad. How do you start to feel okay about those things? Because I think that's probably an easier place maybe for a lot of people to start because we all want to get rid of those bad feelings. We're not always so excited and energized to say, take something that makes us feel good and get rid of it. So what can we do first to find the things that make us feel bad and make them make their, find a way to feel better? And then maybe it will be easier to get rid of some of those things that make us feel good instead that are no, that aren't good for us because we've we, we're not as burdened by the things that make us feel crappy all the time two two things that come to mind when you said that bears was purpose and fulfillment is you need to find we're not getting purpose. back to the purpose and passion conversation again we're not we? getting back to no we're not getting, <laughs> this is about purpose and fulfillment because be that's right. the thing is like you're in you're feeling bad Something you're doing makes you feel bad or you're feeling bad. You lost a loved one, something like that, right? A lot of people's instant, you know, instinct or whatever is going to go into pleasure. Okay, I got to find something that's going to bring me joy. I got to comfort myself with some food. I got to comfort myself with something. And so we go for a pleasure, right? But when you're in those times where you're feeling really bad, something's happened. Pleasure is not going to, it's not going to bring you fulfillment at the end of the day. And so I think you really need to look down for purpose and, and, create an empowering meaning about that situation if that makes sense to you guys because i know and i lost a loved one i think a year and a half ago i lost my grandfather and it was really tough for me because we were we were pretty close we were like best friends and we had our we had handshakes and stuff i mean over the past you know the last couple of years before he passed we weren't as close but i still had all those memories from when i was younger and he was like my best buddy he was my grandfather he, he taught me things he was he taught me how to drive he was just like he's this this inspiration in my life and when i lost him it was a tough moment and i had i looked around at all my family and everybody reacted different some people were just nothing no reaction they were just like wow like it's gone he's gone it's done other people were just very very torn like they were just so they're crying hysterically just not being able to handle the situation very poorly or very well and the way i handled the situation was very different because i created meaning it was when he was in the hospital and he was dying and we all had to go to the hospital to see him everybody there was a lot of people you know some people were afraid to talk in the hospital they were they were crying they were just scared the way i handled the situation i know the way cam handled it too is we went in there smiling 
Like we walked into the hospital with smiles on our faces, not because I wanted to smile because I went in there thinking, okay, what is my purpose here? My purpose is to bring joy to my family in this time of suffering. My purpose is to bring some sort of happiness to help people realize that this might not be the end. Maybe this is the beginning. And that's that, that purpose brought me through the tough times because yeah, they were tough times. My freaking grandfather died, right? I watched him die. We all watched him die. And so I had to create an empowering meaning and crown an empowering purpose around that. And the next, you know, I remember, I think it was like a week later, I had to play at his funeral. I had to play music. And it was tough for me because like, as I had to hold in all these emotions and try to get through this song in front of all these people who wanted to hear this song. And I know my grandfather wanted me to play this song for him at his funeral. And so what I did before I played this, you know, this sad song, I played a song called the knot hole in grandma's grandmother's wooden leg or something like that. It was a song. It was like this weird title that he asked me to write. He said, he said, Brennan, man, I want you to write a song for me and I want you to call it the knot hole in grandmother's wooden leg. And you know, for like, I think it was like years. I didn't even think about writing the song um, until he passed and like he was gone. I could never play him that song. And instead I played the song for all the people at his funeral and everybody cracked up. We all laughed. It was a beautiful thing. I brought joy to people's lives. And then I played the other song. Right? And so basically what I'm getting at here is it's the purpose that will get you through all those tough times. And it's got to be a purpose that fulfills you, not a purpose like, oh, I just want to feel good. That's not your purpose isn't to just feel good. Your purpose is to enjoy and bring joy to others. At least that's what my purpose is. And that's what always brings me through the tough times. It always helps me break bad habits because you realize, okay, why am I doing this habit? You, when you get behind the why, so many things could change because now you, you kind of understand the inner workings of what this habit is doing or what this emotion is doing to you. And so purpose, man, purpose all day long, bro. I like it. And, and you know, it, it made me think of a, when my mom was sick, th- this one moment we had, it was, it was a really uncomfortable moment. It, it was something that you could look at as very sad. She, she was in the, in the bathroom and, you know, I, I never wanted to be in the bathroom with mom. That's my sister's job. So she was in a wheelchair. She had the bathroom. She was having trouble getting up back into the wheelchair and they needed my help. So I had to get in there. I'm straddling across my mom, across the toilet, the wheelchair's there. It's really tight quarters. My sister's in there. My dad's at the door, really nervous watching all this. And I'm pretty much stuck where I was. And I thought, we got to break the tension. I looked at my dad. I said, Dad, quick, grab the camera. Family photo time. And it was something that we all just laughed at because we saw the absurdity of the moment instead of the sadness in the moment. Mm-hmm. And I think that's similar to what you're talking about where you've got to look at what what the positives are. What are the what are the good things? We can look at things in a sad way all the time. We can say, <clears throat> you know, I'm, maybe you're you're in an unhappy uh, marriage or relationship and you can think about that and how terrible that is or you can think about what your future holds or maybe the, the beautiful kids that you created out of that relationship or the, the life you had previously that was yeah. wonderful up until that point. It's, it's all about your mindset and how you look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> but the question is to what Cam was talking about is how do you make that moment then into a level 10 moment? And what you did, what you did with, with the funeral, you, you did that there, but how do you take an unhappy moment where maybe you're battling with someone else and you've got someone else's emotions to deal with at the same time. How do you make that into a level 10 moment? Okay. So for me, I was in an emotional cell. Um, being that my, my, I had to pull the plug on my mom at a young age. Um, that was probably one of the worst decisions, uh, worst choices I've ever had to make. Um, shortly after that i was literally an emotional sale i was just behind bars in imprisonment of depression and 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 anger and i believe that the tools for me were number one you know a spirituality number two your know, friends and family uh number three was self self-improvement or today that people call it you know personal development um number four was 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 my company i wanted to build my company and and then number five was was really um really giving up 
some of those those bad habits that you talked about earlier. You know, giving up tobacco, giving up coke, and and just not coke, not that drug. I'm talking coke about coke. Cola. If anybody's watching, <laughs> okay, let's get that straight. Uh, but you know, just giving that up, man. And uh, you know, so I, I found tools. I found an avenue a lane for me to help myself and you know for many people out there that are watching it might be that you might you need to find a little bit of knowledge and so you're looking for a coach or you're looking for an avenue that might be the tool for you is to find a great coach or, or surround yourself with people uh you know i i heard uh, dr thomas say yesterday is build your community and it's so true because you know the more i look at it as i want a great substantial community even where i live i want a great community so what do i do i pick up trash or i just find things that are very moving and so it's the same thing with our lives internally uh, inwardly also in our our minds is we want a great community so build your community up and have some five steps have three steps have 21 steps if you want but have some steps that will definitely direct you in towards that having that 10 moment and staying on that 10 moment every single day because i've had people ask me coach how do you wake up with such uh, so much enthusiasm so much energy i have i've made it i've made it a practice i've made it an absolute practice for seven years and that's why i have it yeah yeah well hey man there's lots here in this episode for people to take away cam kicked it off with the quality quantifier we had talks about like grilled cheese and like cocaine and stuff so yeah i think if you watch this episode um if you're watching on itunes YouTube, whatever. There's plenty of stuff for you to take home here. So yeah, man, I'm going to wrap it up with my last words and just say like, you create your experience at the end of the day. Like, and if you're, if you're willing to take responsibility for that, if you're willing to say, okay, I feel the way I feel because of me, I think the way I think because of me, I do what I do because of me, that's freedom, dude. Cause now you get to change it. Now you get to be, go do whatever, create whatever you want in life. And so boom, do it. Kim. You got some last words? No. You you said it, bro. I love that. That was awesome, Brian. Frank, Bears, last words? It, no, man, it, ignite, it, I, I, I would say, I have to say ignite your mind as well as ignite your heart. Mm. Ignite that guide you and go on and fulfill your endeavors. Yes. Bears, any last words? I like what you said. It's it's your responsibility. It's your life. It's your choices. If you're unhappy in it, that's your choice. You decide what you want the day to bring when you wake up in the morning. That's totally 100% up to you. And if you don't believe it is, then guess what? If you believe it's in someone else's hands, then you've given it to someone else. And you need to reclaim it if you want to have a happy life. Boom. We got to wake up Cam here with some explosions. Oh, oh. wait. I'm just chilling. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys for tuning into the Motivation Mastermind. We do this like every Friday. We get different people, different leaders, teachers, authors, coaches, whatever you want to call them. We get them all together in a Facebook Live. We live. We mastermind about it. We talk about it. If you guys got questions, you got anything you want to know, anything you want to chat about, you want to join the conversation, hey, do you want to be on the show? Do you want to be like on the call with Frank, Bears, me, and Cam? Dude. Get a hold of us. We'll get you on the show and we'll have a good time. We'll just have a chat. We'll mastermind about it. Yeah, sound good? Cool. I'm good. Peace, guys. Later, guys.